Hi everybody, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts. Um, we've just taken on another car, now this is a 1984 Land Rover 90, so very similar to the 1985 Land Rover 90 that's sitting over there, the green one that you'll have seen before. Um, now this will get exactly the same treatment as the previous one and as all the Series 3s that we're doing and the Series 2s, um, in that it's getting a net gain Hyper 9 motor and it's getting connected to five Tesla Model S batteries. So we only got this a couple of days ago and we've taken the engine out and I wanted to show you the difference between the engine that comes out and the motor that goes in. Um, so to get me started, this is a 2.5 NA engine from 1984. This is actually a military spec car, so military spec engine. Um, we're pretty sure it's the original engine that was in, that was in this car. Um, and as you can see, it's a bit horrible. <laughs> um, it's very, very dirty, oily, um, as you can see all over it there. Um, and then this is the spangly new electric motor that will go in. Okay, so much, much smaller, as you can see. I'm just gonna go through a couple of the main differences. Um, so the first thing is obviously size. This massive diesel engine took up this, basically this entire space, apart from the radiator at the front here and a few bits and bobs around it. This is much smaller and will only go just in front of the bell housing there on the gearbox as you can see. So that means it only sort of takes up that area of space down the bottom there, leaving all the area above that for the batteries. Um, so the batteries will sit here um, as will DC-DCs, management systems, the inverter for the motor, um, meaning we can fit most of the things in the conversion in the bonnet here. Um, the only thing we don't put in the bonnet is the charging system, and the charging system goes under the seat, um, just to keep it a little bit tidier under here rather than sort of trying to cram absolutely everything in. So that's size. On size, we've obviously got weight. Now, we don't know the weight, exact weight of this engine, but we're thinking it's somewhere between 250 to 300 kilos. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a fair old lump. It takes, it takes a lot of people to move it around in an atrocity crane. This net gain Hyper 9 motor is 50 kilos, okay? So, significantly lighter. Um, now, people are always thinking, oh, batteries are super heavy, um, you know, you, you're gonna have to upgrade everything because you're putting so much weight into these cars. Now, we actually take weight out of the cars. So, if you think of this as 300 kilos, we've got our motor at 50 kilos, our battery pack is about 125 kilos, add a couple of bits and bobs, and you know, we're only sort of pushing 200 kilos, let's say, all in for our conversion, whereas this alone is 300 kilos, plus the exhaust, plus a full fuel tank, you know. We're getting a lot lighter, which is not only great for efficiency, it's better on the power, on the steering. Um, obviously, there's not always power steering in these cars. This one actually has got it, um, but if you don't have it in your car, it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's size and weight. Now we talk about performance. This is 1984 um, and from new it had 68 horsepower. Um, it definitely doesn't anymore because on its way here from Somerset this car didn't go over sort of 45-50 mile an hour so that was a long way. Um, but obviously they lose a lot of their horsepower um, and you know getting a car like this, this is a two and a half ton car, getting a car like this up to modern day speeds, so accelerating with a modern hatchback and all 60 and say 10 seconds, um, being able to sit on the motorway at 70 comfortably rather than sitting in the slow lane and being scared, this wasn't really up to the job. Now, talking about the net gain Hyper 9, this thing's got 120 horsepower, um, so let's say double the original, and the same goes with the torque, double the torque than this one. Okay, so that obviously opens a whole world of opportunities in terms of driving. Um, it makes it much easier to drive. Um, the added torque means you don't, never have to change gear, so we just stick it in third, maybe fourth if we're feeling up to it. Um, and the torque curve is so wide that it allows you just to accelerate from the lights in third gear as if it was an automatic car. If you try to accelerate from the lights in third gear with this, it, you just could continuously stall you know, or ruin your clutch. Um, so, it's a huge upgrade even though it's so much smaller and a fifth of the weight. Um, so, 
Beyond that, let's have a quick talk through the motor itself. Now you'll realize it's got a, this big dirty green thing on the top of it. Um, now I haven't cleaned that up, usually it'll be clean, but we just wanted to get this, this video done before we test fit it. Um, this is the flywheel housing, and you can see the original clutch and flywheel are here. So that, 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 and that were all on the front of this engine here. So if I turn this, you can see this is where this flywheel housing sat. Um, this is the, obviously the original coupler on the engine. We've got a new coupler that looks a little bit like this uh, that will attach to the motor in a moment. Um, but using an adapter plate here, we've been able to create a system that means we are using this flywheel and flywheel housing, and therefore it can connect straight to the original gearbox of the car. Now, you might be thinking, why do we want to use the original gearbox of the car? Now, for us, electric conversions shouldn't be crazy expensive. They should be attainable for, you know, people wanting to get into the electric realm. So we try and base ourselves off being similar to a new electric car, um, like a Renault Zoe or a Nissan Leaf, or, you know, the bottom end, um, cheaper electric cars, that's where we want to price ourselves. Um, and the only way we can do that is by using the original drivetrain. As soon as you start refabricating drive systems, drive shafts, differentials, blah, 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 the cost goes up significantly because obviously it's a lot of our time and it's a lot of custom fabrication. So everything behind this gearbox stays exactly as it is. Therefore, the four-wheel drive systems are the same. High and low ratio are the same for off-road. Um, dip locks are the same. You can actually change gear, which is a bit weird in an electric car, but it works really well. So if you pulled up at the lights and you know there's someone next to you wanted to burn out, just put it in second gear and you'll fly off. Um, same goes if you're going off-road. Put it into first gear, put it into low ratio, and, and this thing will climb because of the amount of torque. Now, another interesting way of thinking about that torque is that you don't have to sort of rev the engine up and then dump the clutch to get the torque. The torque is always available from zero RPM. So, a couple of, you know, a couple of interesting things there. Um, we're about to continue building this up. So, if you can see in there, we're gonna put the coupler on, which isn't actually this one, but it's similar. Flywheel goes on in there, clutch. Clutch plate goes on the top. And then we're gonna stick it in there. Now, we always have to start with the motor on the build because everything else goes above it. So what I'm doing today is putting the motor in there, we're gonna strap it into position, and then Matt, who's our fabricator, will fabricate it using the original um, engine mounts here and here to secure it really, really tight. Now, you're not securing the weight so much as you're securing the rotational force. So if you can imagine the 120 horsepower just trying to twist itself, you really have to clamp that down really, really tight. Um, hold it exactly in place. So that, that's next on the list on this conversion. Beyond there, battery box goes on the top, fill that with five batteries, and then it's time to do all the electronics. Okay. Um, couple of other things that I've missed and I want to talk about are the fact that this is water-cooled. So you can see water pipes going in and out of the engine there. It's a right pain because you're using a lot of water to cool down energy that's been produced. So the energy that's produced by this engine, a lot of it becomes heat. I don't know exactly how much, somebody will be able to tell us that. Um, so you have to have a huge radiator all the way at the front here to cool all that water back down again and cool the engine down. Um, so that's grossly inefficient. This is 95% efficient, according to NetGain, so call them if it's not. But um, it's air-cooled, as you can see by these air-cooling fins. Um, but we do actually run a little bit of water cooling for the inverter. So the inverter for this motor has coolant going through a base plate of it, um, just to keep it cool, but it's nothing like the temperatures that are being produced by an engine. We're sort of trying to keep the inverter at 30 degrees rather than 50 rather than we're talking, you know, 80, 90, 100 degrees sometimes when it starts boiling over, like these things definitely did. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to talk about was moving parts. Now, you can see this is very complicated. There's bits and bobs all over it, you know, all these mechanisms are actually moving parts in there. Um, God knows the, the pistons, the shafts in there, all the bearings, etc. all just to make this little thing spin. 
Um, so a lot to go wrong and a lot to service. Um, so even down to these belts on the front being needing to be replaced or uh, alternators, starter motors, all that kind of stuff is things to go wrong. And that's ultimately why this has been pulled out because you know we're fed up with 40 years worth of problems with it. Um, in an electric motor, there's one moving part and it is this one here. So that spins, as you can see there. Um, that's literally it. Um, other than that, it's like a computer. So you don't service your computer. Um, you don't change the, the cam belt on your computer. You just, you know, it's, it's all programmed. Maybe you give it a bit of a clean. That's all we need to do with these as well. Okay, so that gives you a good sort of side-by-side -side comparison of this dirty, horrible thing that I hate and will now go to the scrapyard against this beautiful, super modern electric motor. So, we're gonna get it in now. Have a good one.